You're here to get a diagnostic direction for fuel control testing. Let's start with a question. If an engine is in fact running lean, what would the oxygen sensor report? Many would answer that it would report lean. Well, that's not 100% true, as we're going to see here, and that's because of fuel correction. So first step is to connect the scan tool and select engine data, and basically you want to select fuel system data. Start the engine, make sure it reaches operating temperature, and make sure the system closes loop. This is very important because if it doesn't go in the closed loop, you need to test the oxygen sensors and the ECT because the PCM uses both of those to close loop. The oxygen sensors must be working normally before testing the fuel system. I'm going to say that over and over again. First, snap the throttle and watch the oxygen sensors. They should go to 0.9 volts or above. Now, these sensors are working normally. We have 0.9 during the throttle snap. Snap. These sensors are not working normally. 0.5 and 0.2 is not even near 0.9. They are not working normally. If the sensors don't respond normally, add propane to the engine to see if they can measure. The oxygen sensors can measure a rich condition. If the sensors respond normally with propane enrichment, then you want to go to fuel pressure and volume testing to find out what's wrong with fuel delivery. How come we don't have enough fuel? If the sensors do not respond normally with propane enrichment, replace the oxygen sensor that does not respond normally. Fuel trim. Fuel trim data is only valid when the oxygen sensors are working normally. I told you I was going to keep repeating that. The oxygen sensors are tested first. They must be working normally. Now, look at fuel trim. Ideally, it should be under plus or minus 5%. And that means that on low mileage, highly maintained vehicles, under 5% means that fuel control is near perfect. It's excellent. On vehicles with high mileage and haven't been too well maintained, long-term fuel trim must be under plus or minus 10%. We give it the fudge factor for age, mileage, and not well maintained. When long-term fuel trim is higher than 10%, it indicates that the engine is running too lean. Too lean, if you remember, is caused by not enough fuel or a vacuum leak. When there is a minus sign in front of the long-term fuel trim, it indicates that the engine is running too rich. Too rich is caused by too much fuel or not enough air. In this example, long-term fuel trim is too low. It's minus 6 and minus 9. It's outside that ideal specification of plus or minus 5%. On the top, the PCM is subtracting fuel because of a rich fuel condition. And that's how you read long-term fuel trim. If the oxygen sensors read rich because of a rich condition, the computer is going to make a correction and subtract fuel trying to bring it back to normal. And that's why you must make sure that the oxygen sensors are working normal, normally because if they read rich just because they're broke, the fuel system is still going to subtract fuel. Now, on the bottom, long-term fuel trim is too high. It's 16 and 12 percent there. The PCM is adding fuel because of a lean condition. You need to compare long-term fuel trim with the oxygen sensors as we're doing here. Normal oxygen sensor voltage continuously moves between 0.1 and 0.9 tenths of a volt. And as you can see here, we want it to start crossing and it looks like this when it's crossing. And this one's crossing pretty well. The oxygen sensors are moving between 0.1 and 0.9 so we consider them the crossing normally. In this example, when looking at oxygen sensors and long-term fuel trim, we have a commanded rich condition. You can see the 12 and the 16 percent there. But you can see the oxygen sensor at the bottom are showing a lean operation. If long-term percentage is higher than normal and oxygen sensor voltage always remains low, check for vacuum leaks. You know, too much air go to vacuum leak testing. If no vacuum leak is present, then go check and see why we're not getting enough fuel. Go to fuel pressure or fuel volume testing. Now in this example, long-term
field trim percentage is higher than normal and the oxygen sensor voltage always remains high or rich. You can see it down there, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, always rich. The data is telling us that an input is reporting a need for additional fuel and the PCM is commanding it. Some input, some load sensor is giving a bad signal to the computer. And the computer is saying, okay, I'll add fuel. And the oxygen sensors are now reporting, saying, hey, we're getting too much fuel. If additional, it, the additional fuel is not needed, it's an invalid command. And then you would go to scan data testing. Put your fuel pressure gauge down and go to scan data testing to find out which input is wrong. Here's a different example. If the oxygen sensors are switching normally between 0.1 and 0.9 and long-term fuel trim is higher than normal, the data indicates that this is a valid command. Yes, long-term is higher than normal, but it's valid because the oxygen sensors are crossing normally. When the oxygen sensors report too lean, the PCM commands additional fuel and we see long-term numbers increase. When does it stop increasing? When the oxygen sensors start crossing normally. So we say that although we, it's out of spec, long-term field trim, it's a valid command because the oxygen sensors are switching normally. There's really a problem. The correction is valid. Now, this is a typical lean condition caused by a vacuum leak, low fuel pressure or volume, dirty injectors, map voltage measurement too high, or low engine vacuum. The, the engine's not doing too good. Or a combination of any of the above. And don't forget that last line. Because if we have a high mileage engine with slightly low engine vacuum and dirty injectors, if you fix one and you don't fix the other, you're not going to fix the total problem. Here's a different example again. If the oxygen sensors are crossing normally, long-term fuel trim is lower than normal, the data indicates that this is a valid command. It's just the opposite of what we just explained to you. This is valid because the oxygen sensors are switching normally. So now you know no matter if the oxygen sensors are, uh, if the long-term fuel trim reads high or low and it's not within spec and the oxygen sensor crossing, the PCM did a good job at making the correction. It doesn't mean the problem went away. It just means the PCM did a good job at the correction. Now this is a typical rich condition caused by high fuel pressure, dirty injectors. You know where the ones that leak. ECT, the coolant temperature measurement too low. The EGR position signal too high. And that means you'll have to go on a road test because the EGR should not be open at idle. Or, once again, any combination of the above. Use long-term field trim and the oxygen sensor information to get a direction in which to take your diagnostics for fuel system. Well, let's move into some high-tech testing now. Here is an example of field trim analysis on the e-scan scan tool. Now, if you want any information about this scan tool, please call the number on the screen. eScan was very kind in loaning us this scan tool, and we've gotten a lot of mileage out of it. We really like the way it does its diagnostics. Now you can see on this example, we have bank one information, and on this example, we have bank one and bank two information. Now, here, with this scan tool, we're going to do some charting, like you see here, and some grafting, and that's really what makes this high-tech. This Chrysler vehicle, that's what we have example of, has a good fuel trim reading. Look at the throttle position range on the chart, and then look at the fuel trim fuel cells. Green is good. It, indicate, it indicates that we have proper fuel control. Look slightly below the word fuel and you'll see the legend. Green is really good. Yellow is okay. It's a, we need to look at it maybe, depending on what the drivability problem is. Orange, we're definitely going to have to look at it. And red, got to go fix it. Got to do it now. Now what makes charting looks so good, works so well in diagnostics, it really helps, is look at this. We are looking at fuel control on both banks over a full load range. 
from idle, lower left hand corner, you can see that from 15 to 2,000 RPM up to 3,000 RPM, basically with a closed throttle. And then as we move up the chart, we're at 90 some percent on the TPS, you can see that we go all the way to 4,500 RPM with a wide open throttle basically. And what we're reading is absolute throttle position on the left side of the chart, look sideways and you'll see it, then at the bottom that's RPM. And that's what's so important about this type of testing is we're looking at the fuel correction, the numbers in the green boxes is long term fuel trim. You can see we have some really good clean numbers in there, well within specs. In fact, they go from zero to eight. And then we're just going to look at this chart and it's going to help us diagnose fuel trim problems over an entire load range. Now at throttle position uh, at zero to seventy percent in this example, we can see that we have the orange boxes have from plus fourteen to plus sixteen. Now that problem is indicated at idle. Look at the lower left hand corner there. We have a closed throttle all the way up to 3000 RPM. We open the throttle a little bit all the way up to 3000 RPM and we have orange boxes going all the way up to about 70 percent of throttle opening and then the boxes turn green. Now this is an example of possibly a vacuum leak or a sensor problem. It could be an oxygen sensor problem. Now when you first look at this you say hey I'm not getting enough fuel at the lower RPMs, lower throttle opening, lower end of the load range. But when I'm at high load I get plenty of fuel. Now this is important because notice how it turns green at the 80 and 90 percent throttle. This indicates that fuel delivery system is capable of delivering the fuel requested. And, and that helps us to conclude that the fuel pump, fuel filter injectors, the electrical circuit of the injectors and fuel pump, it's all working good. How do we know? Because when fuel demand is the highest, we have plenty of fuel delivered. So what we're looking at down here is a possible sensor or a vacuum leak. Now here's an example of a Chrysler with a complaint of no power. Let's look at it. We have both banks there. And the first thing that jumps out makes me see is the red boxes. All right. In the red boxes we see numbers, long term fuel trim percentages from plus 27 percent to plus 30 percent. And you can see that it's at the highest throttle opening. It's at high loads. We are not getting enough fuel at high loads. Well let's go to the opposite end and look at the green boxes down there. At idle we have good fuel delivery. Now what happens here is just the, this is the perfect example of vehicles that run out of fuel at higher engine loads. If this vehicle, if you tested this vehicle and you looked at long term fuel trim at idle, it passes. And you would think you do not have a fuel control problem. But when you need to fuel the most at higher loads, you do not have it. Now, this is very typical of a dirty injector, dirty fuel system, a weak fuel pump, a partially plugged fuel filter. In fact, to fix this vehicle, they had to replace the fuel pump and the filter, and then all the boxes turned green. This is a perfect example. If you would have just looked at long-term fuel trim at idle, it would have passed, and you wouldn't have realized that, yes, this vehicle has a fuel system problem. So let's change from charts to graphs now. Now on the left side there you can see we have bank one short term fuel trim and long term fuel trim and then the bottom two graphs we have bank two short term and long term fuel trim problems. And our arrows are pointing to short term fuel trim. They both look alike. And you know what? Long term looks like look alike also. Taking that into account, we're going to, on the left side, we're just sitting there at idle. Now we're going to start driving the vehicle. The B1 and the B2 short term fuel trim still look alike, but they're both starting to react to the throttle opening or driving conditions. Now they both start to increase. That's important because we're going to tell you 
that long-term field trim looks alike on both banks, and they're starting to decrease. In fact, when we look at normal fuel control during a test drive, this is what it looks like. You can see every time short-term fuel trim increases, long-term fuel trim decreases. And that's its job. Long-term fuel trim is driven by short-term fuel trim. The short-term fuel trim is driven by good oxygen sensors, ones that you verified are good before you got into fuel control testing. And you can see every time short-term fuel trim goes up, the long-term fuel trim makes a correction and goes down on both banks. This is an example of normal fuel control during a test drive. We are looking at both banks here, and we have a well-balanced fuel delivery throughout both banks. Now here, we have just the opposite. Bank 1 and Bank 2 fuel trims are opposite of each other. You can see that we have them well labeled there for you. Bank 1 short-term fuel trim, long-term, and then Bank 2. Same chart as before, but a different vehicle. So you can see that we have a long-term and a short-term on the top, and long-term and short-term on the bottom, and they're opposite of each other. In fact, let's look at these short-terms. You can see that the Bank 1 short-term is at minus 5%, and the Bank 2 short-term is at 10%. They're really far apart, indicating that both banks are not balanced correctly. And when we look at long-term, they're apart also. Bank 1 is minus 8, Bank 2 is plus 1. So we do not have good balanced fuel delivery from bank to bank. Now it could be very well that we have a bad oxygen sensor on one of the banks. But if you were working on this car, that wouldn't happen because you tested the oxygen sensors first. So short-term fuel trim is driven by the oxygen sensors, and then it drives long-term fuel trim in the opposite directions, indicating that we have fuel delivery. We have good fuel delivery, so the fuel pump and the fuel filter are probably good. You're going to have to isolate which bank is not correct, and then it's probably an injector problem, dirty injectors or maybe an injector not working so good. It could indicate, remember, that we have a bad oxygen sensor on one side or bad fuel delivery. Now, if you want to isolate it, which one's which, perform the propane enrichment response test on the oxygen sensors to determine if they're good or bad. If, if they fail, replace them. If they pass, go on and test fuel delivery on that one bank. You will now be returned to the test selection menu. Make a selection based on the information you found during your testing.